Nobody's life is perfect, and sometimes we don't have the ability to cope with it. When my mom passed away, I was 10, and I went to live with my dad and his family. I hadn't actually met this family until I was 10. Not being able to process that, not knowing how to, not like having help, it was just really, it was bad. My mom had suffered from Huntington's disease. I have it, and I kind of had this like subverse thing with myself where like, if I had tested positive for the Huntington's disease, I would pretty much do everything in my power to make sure that I lived life to the fullest, whether I ended up dying or not. I started using pain pills in the beginning, which progressed into heroin. I became an IV drug user, and I was that for quite some time. If it wasn't for like the one friend that I had made, he said that we can go to the ER and find out about the detox. I took every opportunity that was given to me through finishing the detox, which at that point I got accepted to the Beacon House. Greenfield was a small town with one big intersection, but it was really welcoming coming in here. For people going through recovery, having a place where they can be safe, where they're not subject to the outside world, and the peer support is incredibly valuable. You had a bed, you had a, you had a pillow, and you had a blanket. You know, not only did you have that, but like you had other women who were familiar with what you were going through. That was probably the nicest feeling ever, to know that I was in an environment where I was safe. You get a foundation if you're willing to take all of the help given to you. And I remember mentioning that I needed something to do. And then all of a sudden, the peer outreach coordinator said, I have a man coming here to talk about this 5K event in light of all of the recent um, overdoses. And that day, you know, we had a conversation about how the Firebird would be an integral part of like being able to bring that education and awareness into this town. And I couldn't believe that I was being asked to help. The race started because there wasn't really anything in town that brought everybody together, like firemen, residents. I started planning for the race and I met Devin and she wound up doing all the work pretty much. I've never experienced a community like this, but I've also never been an active member of a community. The amount of help and the kindness that I received from this town is why I've chose to stay here and like continue to give back to my community. So there's a common thread in uh, all of the work really that we do here at ServiceNet and that is to support each individual to reach independence or also bringing them to a point where they can make contributions themselves to society. If I didn't have the Beacon House, if I didn't have a place to come and to rebuild my life, I wouldn't would be able to be here and to share that with you. I didn't think that I would be able to make a difference. When you're, you're in the depths of like figuring out yourself and what you're gonna do with your life, nobody's really ever been there to help. And that's what I got here was like somebody to say like, it's okay, like you're exactly where you need to be right now. Devin changed the way I look at addiction. I would say my life's better for knowing her, and she's, she's taught me a lot. I'm grateful. I'm grateful that I'm alive. I'm grateful that the Beacon House exists. I'm just really grateful.